All right, I call today's guest Canada's fitness sweetheart. Her quirky yet charming personality makes fitness far less intimidating to her nearly one million Instagram followers. She's a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a certified nutritional practitioner, helping hundreds of women and men achieve their fitness goals. Please welcome to the show, Katie Crew. Hi, Karen. Hi, it's so good to see you, Miss Crew. Nice to see you too. Um, I was going to call you Miss. Well, I did call you Miss Crew, but are you, you're actually married, so you're not yeah. really Miss Crew. It just feels odd. Mrs. Crew feels like you're speaking about my mother, but that is what I am. <laughs> but you're not Mrs. Crew. You're Mrs. Something else. No, I kept my name. Yeah. Well, you did. Yeah. So you didn't take my cousin Mike's name. <laughs> no, <laughs> didn't take his name. Um, I sort of always had the name where people. Katie is probably a common enough name that to differentiate. It's never been Katie, it's always been Katie Crew. And it just felt strange to be married and have to be known as someone else. So I was like, no, I want to keep my name, so. No, I understand, I would totally do the same. Mm -hmm. And it helps because you have such a short name, like Katie Crew. They always have to say your last name for some reason. I know, everyone does. And people obviously like independent of each other. So it just becomes Katie Crew really fast. So, well. well, they always call me Karen Pang. I'm like, could you not say my last name? It's kind of embarrassing. Why? Not the good I name. I don't know, because it rhymes with other things. Well, Crew but... rhymes with poo, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> strong here. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're making me feel a lot better. <laughs> Anyway, so for people that don't know you, which I find really hard to believe, you're a huge fitness influence on so many women and men all across the world, um, mainly in the U.S. and U.K. even. Canada's not even, like, your top two countries. I think it's just because we're, as you know, being Canadian, <laughs> we're just a much smaller country. So it's just a smaller pool to draw from, I think. So I know that that has been a thing with certain brands and whatever. They're like, oh, you don't have a majority Canadian following. It's like, no, there's not many of us. And I guess the ones that are here don't like me that much. So. Oh, stop. It's, like, you, it's just like really space apart. <laughs> yeah, no. Exactly. Well, I wouldn't take offense to it because, I mean, someone like Justin Bieber, I'm sure most of his fans are not from Canada. <laughs> yeah, me and JD, like very similar. Very, you know? very, similar. very similar. Could you, neck and neck. Could you imagine what his last name uh, rhymes with? I don't know. Bieber. <laughs> oh <my. P> <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Like your fitness journey, it's gone through the ringer because basically you started, your dad worked out and stuff, and then you went to college, and then you're doing a lot of cardio stuff, then you decided, oh, I'm going to teach classes, do some lightweights, and you start, you're competing, and then you got out of competing. So you've gone like through the roller coaster of the fitness scene. Yeah, I, I, it's been an evolution for sure. And like the newest evolution is just, just started, obviously. It's trying to rebuild strength now. But yeah, it's been a really good learning experience to sort of be in the place of uh, where a lot of people are. So I can relate to a lot of things. And some of it's been more positive. Some parts have been more positive than others, but they've all been good learning experiences. So you've definitely evolved because I think the people that started with you, I feel like they grew up with you because now you're a mom. We yeah. can talk about that later because I would love to talk about your cute little daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what made you decide to lift weights? Because I know you did a lot of the classes during college, but what really yeah, sure, made yeah. you want to lift heavier after like doing the aerobics and stuff like that? Um, the main reason I didn't initially was just being anxious because I've always just let anxiety rule my life a little bit too much, and it was less scary to hide in an exercise room and do something that I was good at, you know, because that was sort of something like doing track in school and something I knew and playing soccer my whole life. I was like, oh, okay, I know I, I have endurance and I can do this. And we tend to like things that we're good at. And at least I know I, I really wish I had the type of personality that sees a challenge and like, I'm not good at this. I'm going to tackle it. But I'm like, oh, it scares me. So I'm just going to hide over here, stay in my lane. Um, which I've had to like try very hard to fight against that. But yeah, it was finally, finally taking some, some weightlifting classes with my dad again. It was the body pump. Do you know those classes? The body pump classes uh, it, are good life. It sounds familiar, the body pump, but it's like basically like barbells and stuff like that. I think it's a very light, very lightweight, high repetition classes for, but 
at least introducing me to the idea of adding external weight to my workouts. And, and uh, yeah, it was like sort of seeing, um, and I was also getting more interested in like fitness magazines and um, seeing like bodybuilding.com and seeing all those those strong women. And I think it was like Jody Bohm who was doing these push-ups against the wall and I was like, holy crap. And I got really um, interested and impressed with that. And so I started venturing out. And uh, no, I'll give him credit for this. It was also Mike a little bit too, um, who encouraged me to to be brave and go out with him and start lifting weights in the weight room. And then, uh -huh. it, yeah, that was really nice. And then, of course, like as soon as I get my claws into something, um, I, I tend to get a little extreme with things like that. And I was like, I can get stronger and do better. <laughs> so... Yeah, I guess it, it became like a, a a passion for sure. Where and and it was a really good learning experience to be like, oh, this was something I was so scared of, and now here I am feeling like very accomplished. So it was just super cool. Got kind of no. addicted to the feeling, I guess. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, your dad he he went to the gym with you. Was he like a meathead? Was he into the bodybuilding thing? No, no, no. He's like a cardio bunny for sure. Oh. <laughs> Well, he was your safety blanket going to those body pump classes then. He was, yeah. He's actually, uh, he won't admit it, but I think he's a little scared to leave those classes. Um, I tried a lot, of, like a few times to be like, well, you should come out to the gym with me and we can do some exercises. And I've written him a program and stuff. But yeah, he's a very fit man. He's always been super fit. He was an extremely good athlete, soccer player, but he never got super duper comfortable like with free weights, lifting, lifting weights. So. Look, I mean, look at his daughter. He's probably intimidated by you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Probably still com competing with me, as well, if anything. So you started lifting when you started dating Mike. Mike is now your husband, your yeah. boyfriend at the time. And yeah. you guys have been together almost like forever. How many years ago was that? Like almost eight, forever, yeah. ten? Uh, so 14 years this year. 14? Aren't you like 14. 22? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's nuts. I was thinking when I met him, he had just turned 23, and I kept thinking about how old I thought that was. I was like, <laughs> old? And he he just turned 37. It's like whoa, yeah, that's a big old. leap. Now he's really old. Now he's, <laughs> he's really kidding. old. Don't worry, cousin Mike. I got you. You're not that old. <laughs> Asian don't raisin. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, he looks great for sure. Well, you look great too. I mean. You posted the other day going makeup free and your insecurities with it. And, and that's a huge thing to go on Instagram without makeup on because a lot of girls don't, you know, with the whole Instagram culture, the nip tuck face tune thing. And mm -hmm. it's really brave to go makeup free. But I swear to God, the first time I met you, you had no makeup on and I thought you looked great. You barely needed anything. How hard was it to you, for you to let go of or how long did it take you to want to even fuck? Excuse me do that <laughs> uh, it, I wasn't like a planned or like conscious thing initially so I was actually it's funny you mentioned that I was very nervous before you came in I know that's it's so silly it really seems so um, narcissistic but not in the sense of just w because it's quite like self focus me being like oh, she's going to think I'm like some fraud or some, like, why did they bring this troll on here? And it's just so ridiculous. But I, I had these thoughts before I met you. And it's just been some some things that I'm working through, which I, I know, again, like, seems so patently ridiculous, no matter what you look like, to be so consumed by something like that. Um, so I think, like, that was the biggest hesitation with sharing something like that was seeming so out of touch, I guess, about being so concerned about something like that. But it was really interesting. I mean, I shouldn't have been that surprised, but just how many people messaged back saying, I feel the exact same way. And I think that a lot of us hear this in our, in our formative years. I had some like crappy ex-boyfriends and that were just, you know, like you would do things to intentionally make me feel like garbage or just were like a little bit like too honest and hypercritical, you know, and, and then some other other people as well. Which when you hear things during, you know, your formative years and a lot of, you know, your value is placed on this, unfortunately, like it really does inform your future behavior. So yeah, it's kind of something I've been embarrassed about because because I have worked hard to sort of improve my relationship with my body and give myself a break with that and then to be so concerned. It's, it felt a little embarrassing, I guess, but 
Yeah, I think the pandemic's helped, even though it's not like I was I was going into an office, but I've heard that from a lot of people that that um not having to like do that ritual every day of putting your makeup on um has been really liberating for them to, to sort of just feel more comfortable. And I think the more that I've seen my face, how it actually is, the more comfortable uh, I've gotten with it. And yeah, some days I wake up and I'm like, oh, I feel nice. And that never used to happen. And so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna share this. And then it seems to, to resonate, so. It absolutely yeah. does. Cause, and also I think it's also you being a mom you don't have time to freaking put on makeup every day. Like I'm not even a mom and I hate putting on makeup. This is like first time <laughs> put on makeup and I don't know how long to put it on for you. But same, same. Like, like you said, it's liberating. And I think it comes with maturity too, because mm. a lot of young girls out there, early twenties, they get so insecure with the whole, um, I hate to say it. Like I'm sure if I was 22, I'd probably get this stuff done too, but a lot of stuff done to their face and stuff like that. Injectables. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, whatever folks are wrote, but um, I feel like, do you feel like it's too young, like early 20s to get stuff done to your face? I don't know. I, it, it is really normalized now, and it's just not something, you're right, that was ever commonplace. It was never really a thing that a lot of people did when I, I was that age, I guess, so it didn't really... I don't know. I have a hard time telling other people about their own motivations and like what they want to do with their own body and face. I really think mm. like you should have that autonomy. Uh, however, I guess I'll use this analogy. I always wanted breast implants. It was something that I was always like very insecure about my chest size. And the older I've gotten, the more I've been comfortable with the, I mean, they're a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're lacking. <laughs> You got some titties because you lack dating. <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying I would have regretted it had I done it, but it's just that I am just more comfortable with being me now, and it's not something that I really desire anymore. And so it's like, oh, okay, I didn't have to do that to be happy with myself. And so you'd have to think that maybe as you know that they matured, they might start to feel a little differently about themselves, but hopefully nobody regrets these choices or does anything super permanent. But, I mean, it's so hard. I, I, like we didn't have Instagram when we were in high school and just to like be constantly inundated with it. I'm sure it's like extremely, extremely difficult. They're navigating, you know, this new water. So I do, I do feel like very sorry for kids because a girl mom, like it does give me a little bit of anxiety thinking about, you know, how she's going to have to grow up with these, these influences. Cause like it is tough. I think as long as you instill confidence in her, she doesn't, she won't feel the need to, do all that not again i'm not saying it's a bad thing that these girls do this because you know i got my breast implants when i was 21. that was young looking back was i too young In hindsight. yes i was too young and <laughs> i didn't tell my mom and i was trying to hide them and Aww. like she knew and i felt so horrible but in hindsight Aww. yeah i wouldn't have gotten at 21 but it is one of the better decisions i've made in my life and there are no regrets but Anyways, yeah, you moving look along. Let's well, be honest. <laughs> you, well, and they're not real, so I can't claim them as my own. I blame my 21-year-old 21, 21 self. Okay, so I, a lot of people get into fitness from competing, and you mm -hmm. drank the Kool-Aid once. Oh, and yeah, the, yeah. the reason why I call it the Kool-Aid, because I find it very cult-like, the fitness competition world. Do you do you agree or disagree? You would have the best insights into this for sure is you have a lot of experience. Um, it's definitely far removed. You definitely get in like your little fitness echo chamber and you, you, you get removed from what is normal <laughs> other parts of life. And you start to think this, like the stuff that at least some of the stuff I was doing, which I would classify as like slightly disordered. Yeah. It just seems like normal. It's like, Oh, maybe this isn't so great. But then you had the wherewithal to withdraw from it after one or two shows. Yeah, I wouldn't give me that much credit. I think, like, <laughs> I, I realized, like, I was, like, extremely unhappy afterwards. So it was one show, but then it was a number of photo shoots after, and one of the photographers was brutal, like, brutal. Speaking of, like, tapping into insecurities, mm. bad. So uh, I, I remember he'd asked, like, oh, are you going to come in looking like competition shape? And this was like months after the show. He's like, because like some girls have said they, they would, and then they come in and I'm like, mm, look 
wow. This is he a known cool photographer? Uh, I don't know how known he is, like known-ish, yeah. But you tell I, me after. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just, I, I don't even know if it was malicious or not. Like, I doubt it, but I took it. Sorry, I'll start moving. I took that very seriously. Um, being like, oh, I can't disappoint him. I'm kind of looking at this. So I prolonged that diet way longer than I should have. I remember being at the gym multiple times on the treadmill, like sobbing. Like I had to get off because I was like, I cannot physically be on here for this 40 minutes of cardio I'm forcing myself to do. And so I go to the exercise room and like do burpees or I don't know why that was an easier option. I don't know. <laughs> to get away and do something else. And I was like the most insecure I've ever been. So um, fixated on this and and uh, I remember I'd like flown out later to go to a family vacation. Um, it was my cousin's wedding and I could not control, like it, it, this stuff wasn't as well known or talked about. Maybe it was, just not to me, um, about how, that like post-show binging and weight gain. And so I really didn't know what was happening or why I was acting like that. But a lot of it's physiological, right? Like your body is just trying so hard to put weight back on and normalize and after restricting for so long and oh man I just I've never felt so out of control around food in my life and oh I, I gained like 10 pounds in like a week or something it was just like very noticeable um, and I was just like the most exhausted I've ever been and I'm a parrot so I can tell you I was exhausted then and and I, it was just kind of like the prospect of going back and doing it after I'd done all that to my body, because I recognized, like, I guess I'm not very durable, am I? I must be really sensitive, because my body was like, that's enough for you. So it kind of, like, made the decision for me, and then... Did you have a coach at the time? I did, yeah. Mm, okay. No names till after the show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, did you, do you remember if your skin felt like it was really tight, and it kind of hurt after you were binging? It must have been like a long time ago, but for me, after the show, after rehydrating and eating more carbs, I felt like my skin hurt because my body was expanding. No, I can't say I ever had that sensation. Um, that is very interesting, though. It's weird. I developed a bunch of like food intolerances that I hadn't had before, though. So that very stuff. common. Which yeah. ones did you get? Asparagus. Um, all the thawed maps like it was never a good situation like it was garlic and stuff before that but like the number of intolerances and a contact allergy like a like to, to chapsticks and lip gloss and lipstick remember how i can only use that one lip liner yeah. yeah it was it was since then it was right after that that i was like developing different allergies could have been coincidental i'm not sure but it was, it was mac remember it was mac dervish was it dervish oh gosh, memory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yes, why I remember that. That was exactly it. Yeah. And, and, so, and you use like shea butter, I remember. Yeah. And so I actually thought so some allergies, like when I was pregnant, some food intolerances, I they weren't bothering me anymore. So like I could eat yogurt for the first time in a long wow. time. Wow. Like, oh, this is amazing. And then uh, I, I tried to do some of this stuff afterwards and it I back to crap, back to normal. And so I started wearing like a chapstick and it was fine for a few times and I was like, I've gotten rid of this allergy, but no. <laughs> that's, oh, that's so unfortunate. All from like that one freaking show. Who knows? I mean, maybe I was, I was trying to look up, look up research on that to see if that's a thing. And I've seen a couple things about developing allergies, but yeah, you're totally right about the, the food. Did you develop anything? Any food intolerances? Yes. So asparagus was one. Eggs was another. Ah, yeah, I haven't. I rarely eat eggs now, so I'm slowly introducing it. But I don't think it's a good idea because my acne is out of control. Um, and rice, which is funny because I'm Asian and I used to eat a lot of rice. So and now it's supposedly like a hyperallergenic food. Like it's just a, not a common allergy, right? I don't know. I was just really surprised, but um, I don't know. So I haven't really eaten rice, right? but I should do another one. It's been years since I've gotten it done. And um, it'd be really nice to figure out what I'm sensitive to. Yeah, like start with small amounts and see if you can like, handle some sushi or whatever. I know. Uh, clearly, you're a smart cookie, Katie. Um, oh, thanks, Karen. And I'm not because I just totally <laughs> dropped my phone. <laughs> um, you have a degree in psychology. Yeah, I do. 
and you had the opportunity to go to law school. Now, why, why would you choose an unstable, potentially unstable career like fitness as opposed to going to law school where you, know, you could potentially make some mad money? Um, I've never been intelligent, like with my <laughs> intelligence. I've never cared as much about money as I should, um, which is positive in some ways for sure. But uh, I think like growing up with, oh, sorry. But it worked out to your favor because you're making mad money now. You probably <laughs> are as stressed as if you were, to, you know, if you were a lawyer, you'd be way more stressed, working a lot of hours. Not to say that you don't already, but I think it worked out to your favor that you didn't care about money and now you're making, you're raking it in. I think like the big thing was that I wouldn't have gone into a type of like a super lucrative type of law because anything where I felt like I was in some way, I would have a hard time. So, so like defending somebody I didn't, you know, have faith in and, or doing some kind of like law for corporations that I didn't agree with. So I'd probably be trying to do something that would be extremely stressful and not, and yeah, it would give, like, give me a terrible, terrible life balance. And so like, this was a way where I felt like, okay, this is fun and I can help people because I know for me, getting into strength training and when I finally like found my groove with, with learning about eating in a way that fuels me and makes me happy and not restricting and all that stuff really was such an asset to my life. And I was like, well, if I can help other people find this. And so it's a way to, to, to help people, but not in such an extreme way as law, depending on what type of law I'm sure. So yeah, I mean, it worked out well. I'm, I'm happy with the, with the decision. It I've just made. shows you have good morals. <laughs> well, I try. Thank you. Uh, what kind of law would you have gone into, you think? It was always like some kind of advocacy law, you know, like, okay. Like, so in, in my um, final year, in third year and fourth year, I worked in a, a lab um, doing data entry, different like research assistant stuff. And then um, my undergraduate thesis was on uh, racism in the criminal justice system. And they also did, did research in sexism. And so I thought that that stuff was um, really important, obviously, to, to sort of get better research in that area. But then I also found that, like, seeing the PhD student who is a wonderful, she was a friend of mine at the time, like, she's a wonderful person, how, like, frustrating it is conducting social sciences research, because you're, it's not like, like, you're, um, you can, like, strap, you can do something where you're, like, looking at like a, an fMRI and going, oh, this lights up when this happens, you know, it's like you're relying on people being honest and some people aren't even sure why they're behaving in ways that they are, especially surrounding like racism and sexism. And so, yeah, like that was an area that was interesting to me. And so I was like, well, maybe the next logical thing is to go to law school so I can sort of address this in this other way. And then, yeah, that was the kind of law stuff I was interested in. But It sounds super frustrating because it's not like a def definitive reason or cause it's just someone's opinion um and i hate to bring money into this but it so doesn't sound like the pay is worth the hours and stress i don't know i don't that's just my opinion you don't have to agree or disagree like yeah <laughs> i mean yeah anyways uh obviously you're a new mom now to a very beautiful girl named amelia and yes. how old is amelia now she is six months next week Oh, that's it? Wild. Oh, you're saying that's it? Everyone else is like, she's <laughs> three days old. <laughs> well, she's so cute because I see her pictures and I'm like, it feels like she's older than she is because like, I don't know, I think she's so freaking adorable. Oh, thanks. Yeah, she's she's pretty cute. Yes, it's like, it is crazy how it feels like she's been here forever and then also how she just got here. <laughs> right. Did you prepare for pre-pregnancy diet-wise, training-wise? in anticipation of conceiving? So a number, many, many, many years ago, I went off the pill because I was, I was paranoid. I don't have like issues with my cycle. And so that's why I went on the pill when I was quite young. And I was like, okay, let's see what happens. And and uh, that was a whole saga with like having an anorexia and not getting my period back for like 20 months or something. So that was sort of my prep was like a number of years ago. I was, I was trying to make sure I had, I was ovulating, you know, mm -hmm. and then it was interesting because, because I, I thought it was hypothalamic 
in Maria, I was like chilling out with the cardio and eating more and that also helped a lot probably in in changing some of my fitness habits. But I guess like more of the prep was was then. Um, and then you know what? I was so ignorant. I was like, oh, I'm going to eat all of the vegetables during like, <laughs> pregnancy because I'm going to have such a healthy baby. It's built for my tissues, blah, 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 she, blah. My baby's going to come up with a six pack, yeah. flexing the biceps. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have the most healthy baby, make sure I have all of the, like, the healthy fats and all this stuff. You know what I ate first trimester? It was like cheap triscuits and crackers and cereal and anything brown. Like, it is wild. How someone who loves vegetables and <laughs> lean protein and all this stuff, I couldn't, I could not bring myself to eat any of it. I was just so sick the whole time. And the same with fitness. I I saw somebody do, is it Hanno Burg or something? I saw her doing pull-ups in the third trimester. And I was like, that's going to be me. I'm going to train so hard. Not only are gyms closing, right? So gyms close. And then, man, you're so tired. And not only that, it taught me so much about my core that I had no idea about. It was another incredible learning experience. Do tell, please. Oh, just just how much your core, I mean, I knew it, but just how much it contributes to almost every movement you're doing. Sorry. I'm doing like seated overhead shoulder presses and it's like, whoa, I'm coding. So you're so you're um connective tissue the linea alba between your abs that separates and not just that like all all of your fascia your muscles like you need to separate because like you're accommodating a full grown baby (laughs) it's so normal people like how do i prevent it it's like no no it's good it just means your body's amazing and they're sort of made to separate and come back together right but because of that like man when your abs are like this far apart it is hard to generate like the necessary tension there to not have coning so which is like uncontrolled pressure at the front where you can see like a lump come up the front and so anytime I would do any hanging movements like anything overhead you just saw this like really big bulge, yeah. bulge down the center yeah you can see where the gap is and like you can just see the bulge um, bulge of what the baby no not, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you can see the baby kicking but it's just like because when your muscles aren't there it's just the fascia and so you can see, yeah, like the pressure going outwards. And so it was just bad. It was bad. And I was like, well, I better give up on that. And so it, it just was a lot of sort of really listening to my own advice and, and really going, this is just like a very prolonged deload period. And I'm going to train really for the health of myself and, and for her. And there's, there's going to be no, I'm going to get this PR. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no. going to make sure we do this. Like, no, Katie, no. So it really was it another like great learning experience and exercise and like calming calming down with that stuff and turning off my like uh, competitive athletic brain and 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 just like just being active for for purely for health reasons and yeah man it's just like hard when you're tired I have a lot more I have a lot more I always try and be compassionate but I have like a lot more compassion for for people being like I'm too tired I was like yeah man I get it <laughs> I get it totally. Yeah, you're harboring another human being in your belly. And that's another thing with, the, again, back to the Instagram thing, like girls doing pull-ups, deadlifts. Not everyone's built the same. Right. Like, you are one fit-ass chick. And, like, for you to just tell yourself, I'm not going to do this because it's not working with my pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot more ladies need to hear that. Yeah, I think it's hard. Like, a lot of us, based, I don't know how you feel about this, like, uh, it's a decent part of your identity, right? And and even like certain exercises, if you've worked really hard to achieve something, or like if you're known, like I've known of someone who could do explosive push-ups, and like I can't do any of that for like a, at least a year, you know. And it's just it's hard. It's a rough adjustment, honestly. Um, so it's I do, definitely humbling. Yes, it's very humbling. Yeah. So like I do definitely like. I do definitely understand where people are coming from and like wanting to push things hard. And then also like, dude, the the comments that you get when you're pregnant and training, like it's wild how everyone has an opinion on Oh no. on your body. Like I don't think there was one single video that I posted when I looked at all pregnant where I didn't get crap from someone. Like, 
Are you serious? Yeah. Like what? Okay, for example, yeah. what they say. You're you're gonna kill your baby. You oh don't care God. about your baby. You're selfish. Watch out for the baby. Like some very angry, some just like misunderstanding, which is totally fine. Like if you approach something saying like, "Is this safe?" I don't understand. Like that's fine. That's not a bad comment. Like you know, let me try and like explain this to you or help you in some way. But the one that was, like so angry, like I mean, you're gonna hurt your baby. I was like, bro, you don't know though. Like you've not done any of this research. Like. And it's just like crazy to me that people would assume that you care less about your child than like them, a stranger does. Like, of course I wouldn't jeopardize my kid for this. What, but do you remember what exercise you were doing in particular? Anything, doesn't matter. Anything where you're, you have a barbell is especially like triggering for people, it seems. Like squats, deadlifts. But it's like, I didn't lose my bones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that they're odd, it's like it's on the baby's head. You know, it's. It's just funny, especially because there's really no research that indicates that lifting weights is bad for the baby. That, that it's bad at all. In fact, it's really positive. It's, you want to keep things within certain like um, intensity zones, so you don't want to be like pushing to where you know, like RPE. So you wouldn't want to be pushing like near ten. You want to stay like somewhere in the mid range. And Absolutely. then also like it's also what you're accustomed to. So for example, I never squatted. I was squatting like maybe fifty to sixty percent of my max. So like that's not a lot, and not even. But it's a lot rest. for other people that don't lift. Right. So maybe they looks... were offended. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. So yeah, it just it, it's the perception, right? And so people do give you a really hard time about that, and it got a little stressful sometimes because it's like, well. What kind of shit am I gonna get today for this? But like, let's let's see. But. You know what's even worse for the people that were commenting mean things while you were pregnant and working out. It's like, okay, do you know that your comments are more stressful to me, my baby, than what I'm doing in this workout right here? It is negative yeah. energy. That's positive stress, at least, like right. So ultimately, yeah. like you're getting stronger from from training. But yeah, exactly. But that's that's how it is like it, it's been an interesting adjustment for sure about like oh my audience demographics Karen it's so funny it's like, <laughs> like all the what are your demographics how many, <laughs> how many what's your percentage I'm really curious because I feel like you have a lot of females look can I just guess yeah sure I, I feel like you're 75 percent women and 25 percent men am I close you're close it used to be like 72 or percent women and now it's like 77 or 78 oh see i'm a good estimator yeah <laughs> so like like a lot of the men are like ugh, getting out of here <laughs> i'm surprised like you don't have more women because i think dudes once they know that you're pregnant or in a relationship they don't want to follow you because you're like off the market in their minds not that what? they would ever have a chance anyway but um, i also just want to give that like sort of credit not I never wanted to make this assumption, and it wasn't until recently when I was like, what is happening? And Mike looked at me and like, oh, it's all the dudes, because he looked at my demographic. But, because I just avoid all that stuff all the time. Um, but he, but I think that also, there's a thing when a lot of the, a lot of people sort of, I think, came about my page when they saw I was doing like, deadlifts, heavy lifting, all that stuff that looks, more impressive and I think like in, in a way I, I know a lot of them messaged me and said like oh I got you know my wife was doing a lot more like body weight stuff and I tried to get her to to follow your page to be like look you don't need to be intimidated about like lifting weights and stuff and because a lot of people think they're gonna like touch a dumbbell and then like develop a like, crazy amount of muscle mass help, yeah. like it's easy or something but I think that that, that <laughs> was a big thing it was kind of like look you can do you're capable of doing a lot of things and like it doesn't it doesn't mean that you're not going to look feminine, whatever that means, right? Um, but so I think that when I'm not doing that for a long time, to be fair, it might not be as interesting for people who who are maybe following because it was like, oh, okay, this is like a new move that I'm interested in or, you know, it's just a different style of, of training, but I'm not gonna be irresponsible in my in my rebuilding of, of strength and, and push my body past what it can do, like to appeal to people on Instagram, so that no, just kind of is what it is. It's just like that's just a switch in content and in life, and it is what it is, right? It's an evolution of Katie Crew, is what it is, that's and I love true. it. Yes. <laughs> now, after you gave birth to Amelia, did you find it hard to go back to eating your normal diet, lots of veggies and protein? Because for me, if I eat a lot of crackers, cheese, I don't want to eat healthy. It doesn't have the same taste on my palate. 
Or were you yeah. well, were you glad to eat vegetables again? Or? So I, my my eating got a lot more normal after first trimester. It, that was just the time when I was so nauseous all the time, and I didn't really have many cravings, but like the food aversions were very real, and so that was just the stuff I could stomach more. And then by the end, it was like, oh, I can eat salads and stuff. So that was a little better. Um, afterwards, your appetite is wild when you're when you're breastfeeding because like, your body just I don't know if it's like the sleep too because you're awake on call at like every three hours for 24 seven. And so I was just like eating a lot. Like I remember my best friend brought over some muffins and I was like, Mike was like, where are four of the muffins? I was like, well, I got hungry. So <laughs> four muffins gone. So there was a lot of that. But again, like a lot of it is, is just like your body's changing hormonally, whatever. It's figuring it out. And like, it's a lot like more normal now. I'd say like I was always somebody that struggled when I'm tired and when I'm stressed with with being like on point with my diet. I don't know if you found that for yourself or I know some people tend to eat more, some people tend to eat less, some people aren't that affected. Um, but yeah, so some days it's just like, well, it seems like a day where I'm going to eat three bowls of cereal for dinner. <laughs> but it's actually like such a nice switch to be able to eat a lot of the stuff that I miss so much. Like I missed egg, egg yolks, runny eggs. Oh, yes, because you're not allowed to have that in, like, raw fish. Yeah, I miss, I miss sushi a lot. I, I, so there was a lot of things, like, even I was, like, a little bit nuts about it because, again, like, <laughs> anxious brain. Like, well, I don't want there to be any chance, you know, that there's a problem. And so it would be, like, frozen fruit might be a problem if it was, you know, re, re melted and refrozen. So I won't have that. And like, there was just a list of foods that I wasn't having. And so I was like, oh. Amazing. I can eat cold cuts and stuff again. Cold cuts. Oh, my God. <laughs> right? But I was happy. I haven't heard that word since, like, the 90s, cold cuts. I think they call it charcuterie these days. Uh oh the fancy people, yes. I don't know. It's like a bunch of meat on a piece of wood. <laughs> yes, or between two pieces of bread. Oh, yes. Do you feel, since you had your baby, Do you, is there an increase in expectant moms moms in your in your clientele yes oh that's a very sure. affirmative yes it's almost all of the the messages and stuff i get now it's so funny like even if you share something where you are pregnant or you're postpartum and it's the same workout that i would have been doing otherwise people think it's not for them even if i explicitly say this is the exact same workout i would be doing like the only thing i'm modifying is the weight that i'm lifting and like my breathing strategy to lift mm. my pelvic floor, for example. But but like people think like this is a pregnancy workout. And it's like, no, I'm trying so hard to explain like you need to adapt things for you and like assess how you're feeling and maybe this is perfectly fine for me, but maybe it's unsafe for you and maybe someone else could do way more. Um, but then if people are so visual, right? And so if they see you are pregnant or you had a baby or whatever, they just assume, oh, this is a postpartum workout. So, um, so many messages every time. Well, tons of times people are like, well, <laughs> I was pregnant yesterday. Now, but. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> just in their mind. I was like, oh, man, you're still totally fine to train as you for a while. Um, but, yeah, it's for sure, for sure, for sure. I've actually been like, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, please. I, I was actually, like, rushing when I was pregnant to try and, like, do, do fitness plans because I was like, I'm going to regret it forever if I don't have any content of me while I was pregnant because who knows if this is the only time or not um and where I can like have this so and I, it's like just this this week I'm finishing mad kids I'm telling you but like it's just this week that I'm finishing these these plans like to, <laughs> I'm done and I've already done like all the videos all the audio everything but yeah like so because so many people are like where are the pregnancy plans where's the postpartum <laughs> plans I'm like I'm so sorry like they're <laughs> coming it just takes forever, but yeah, like so, so many people asking about that stuff now. Well, that's an extra workload on you, like in addition to what you were doing prior to being pregnant. Yeah, and having a kid. Do you feel like because you have so many clients, do you, <laughs> this is like a super random question? Do you ever feel like they want to get chummy with you? They want to be your friends, so they want to have personal conversations, and like, how do you deal with that and cut it off in a cordial way? You know how that like social media is all parasocial relationships. Like 
I think that's why people follow people is like they feel like they they know you and want to be your friends. I do that all the time with people. It's like yeah. YouTubers like and I'm like, I wish we were friends. But your clients and they sign up for the Katie Crew plan and then like mm -hmm. you correspond with them in email, but then they start chatting with you. Like I don't know, but I'm sure it happens to you because it happens to some other friends of mine, and they just kind of have to like be non-responsive and. I don't know. It depends on the person. I'd say like some people I've actually formed real relationships with and friendships with and that's that's pretty cool. But you're right, like it's just with the volume of people, you can't possibly have that relationship with everyone. And you just kinda have to listen to people and under you know, understand as much as possible and then respond and then not leave it like too open to be like, So Yeah, how was your day? How was your <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was. It's definitely worse, not worse. It's like harder to to set boundaries. I find with um like one on one coaching, which I was doing for a long time, and I think that some people stayed on longer because they did just enjoy our our chats and it became more like friendship, which is nice. But at the same time, I have to like fire people because I was like, you really don't need me anymore. You should stop giving me your money because you figured all this out. Like. You, and I've taught you how to do it. Like the, the last few months would be me being like, okay, here's your homework. Learn, do this so you can become self-sufficient and I'll like market, you know? And so I was like, you don't need me. You graduate. And they're like, oh, but, which was very so they're, sweet. they're paying but, you to be their friend. <laughs> kind of, right? By the end, which I was like, this is not good. So we need to stop this. But yeah, I mean, like, and the funny thing is like, I would be friends with a lot of them, right? So it, it is, it is hard to, it, I guess my answer to your question is like I am not good at, at setting boundaries and so sometimes it does end up being like if somebody is setting time limits like okay I'm going to respond after a certain number of hours like not immediate yes. to, to certain people because I just don't want to set that expectation um, because then it becomes like a back and forth back and forth and then it's like okay this is bordering yeah. on inappropriate or something and then um, yeah so start strategies like that or, or saying like okay you know it's time to move on. I actually really like you with the chat, like in other capacities, but. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think you're super like approachable from your Instagram. You're quirky, you're funny. And like I said, you make fitness a lot less intimidating because there's a lot of meat and muscles on Instagram and that's how intimidating. Like I don't want to be near yeah. that. Even as being the fitness industry, as long as I have, it actually turns me off. And so I think you make it a lot easier for people to start if that makes sense. I hope so. Like I really do. I definitely understand what it's like to be the person who is too intimidated to start. And so like, that is really my wish is to make people feel like this is something that's accessible for them and like not be gatekeeping. Cause even people that people that look a certain way don't necessarily have the opinion that, you know, like they're more valid than somebody else, but we are visual creatures and it definitely can be very intimidating to see someone like extremely muscular or lean and chiseled and think like oh man I'm so far away from this and and they probably like won't accept me as I am and like that makes me really sad that people would would feel that way because everyone should be doing some form of fitness I don't care if it's lifting weights or not you know like some form of activity it's just good for you physically and mentally and and the more you can sort of get people excited about doing it and, and feeling like that's a space that they can belong in I think is extremely Positive. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't matter when you start, or like where or how. Because when mm -hmm. I started, I freaking I'd stay in the ladies only area. Yeah, and I'd wear like a big T-shirt, and I didn't want to go in the co-ed area. You it's know scary. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's where I started. And look at me now. I'm like wearing, I'm like half naked on my Instagram. So, <laughs> wow, you look incredible. To be fair, I think well, that's exactly how you should be. How old were you when you started training? Uh, I think I got my first gym membership when I was maybe 20. My first boyfriend got me a gym membership. But my brother was into bodybuilding and stuff, and I'd read his muscle and fitness. And uh, that was the I, magazine. Those were the magazines. Yeah. And in high school, we had this, like, shitty weight room, so I'd go in there sometimes. But so it's been a long-ass time, really. It's something that I don't think we'll ever give up because we started young. Yeah, and I mean, like, that's how it should be, right? Like, it's part of your, it's just part of your life. Yeah. All right. Okay, as we taper down this interview, I have a little section at the end. I have a little fun. I uh, usually do Never Have I Ever or uh, Fact or Fiction. 
but today I have would you rather so I have would you rather a or b uh -huh. and this is not too this is pretty safe because I respect your <laughs> demographics <laughs> so I have about five or six questions some of them fun some of them funnier some are just kind of like what <laughs> all right I'm so, nervous already well, these are, if you want to elaborate, then please do, because I, I probably will ask you. Okay. okay. Number one, uh, would you rather be in jail for five years or in a coma for 10? What kind of jail is this? Um, I don't know. Like medium security, perhaps? Uh, coma. I don't, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would not make it. I really don't think I would make it. I'd probably like make friends with everyone who's like trying to manipulate me. And I'd be like, oh, are we friends now? You'd be on the Netflix show uh, Jailbirds or some uh, Jailbirds, about yeah, female yeah. Pri prison people, prison I'd, inmates. Yeah, I'd be like this ridiculously the stupid poor thing. <laughs> All right, next. Would you rather go back in time to when you were five years old with what you know now or raise yourself? as your mom with your own brain right now. Does that make sense? Go back. So would you rather go back in time with what you know now, like starting from age five, or would you rather go back in time and raise yourself as a kid, as your own mom? No, the first one for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's horrible too. They both sound bad. <laughs> um, they both sound really bad. It's so hard because some of the crappiest experiences have been like really great learning experiences and you know like you don't want to take away because you probably wouldn't make the same choices. Like I would not date the same people. But right. I <laughs> but then also like I think my mom did a pretty a pretty great job and like calls me on my crap and tells me to you know she's been she's a better mom to me than I would probably be to me. So I choose the first one. Yeah, you're probably you're probably right. Like she did it. She did. What would you job. choose? I'd go back in time for yeah, when I was five. I wouldn't want to raise myself. Oh Lord Jesus, no. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather accidentally send a mean text to the person you're talking shit about, or accidentally fart meaning your celebrity crush? Fart meaning celebrity crush. For sure. <laughs> Who's your celebrity well, crush anyway? hundred percent. See, that probably makes it easier. Is I don't know if I have a celebrity crush. Mm -hmm. I would geek out over people who like Jake Gyllenhaal. I've never, not really in my entire life, have I had like an actual crush on like, on a celebrity. Really? It was always, like real people. And the people that I I geek out about, like like if I were to see like Natalie from ContraPoints on the street, I'd be like, oh my god. Okay, so let's say that makes me excited. So, but. would you rather fart in front of her? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> so, she's not going to see them again. It's like, oh, at least you'll be memorable. You'll be the, that like weirdo with the gas. Like, oh, but sorry. you're great. But you're Katie Crew. Of course, she knows you. <laughs> of course, who doesn't? <laughs> She'd be like, oh, I like Katie Crew girl. Totally farted when she met me. She's pretty nice, but she sticks pretty badly. I think she's like <laughs> probably ate too much asparagus or something. Oh God, let's not even talk about asparagus. I hate that. Oh, I hate it. Okay, would you rather be the president of the United States or Auto Man, the school bus driver from The Simpsons? Oh yeah, B for sure. The Auto. bus driver dude, yeah. Auto, yeah, yeah. I think so too. Like a lot less, res other than like driving kids and being responsible for their lives. I'd rather do that <laughs> than to be responsible for a freaking country and have everyone oh. hating you. I would be an absolute nightmare. It really makes me, I'm not trying to be cynical here, but like the personality that you'd have to have to even want to do that, that's just not my personality at all. I do not want that power or responsibility. Same. Absolutely oh my God. Not. It's Horrid. stressful thinking about it. <laughs> Next, uh, would you rather sip gin, aviator gin with Ryan Reynolds, or shoot tequila, mana tequila with The Rock? Terramana. <laughs> I have to say A, and that's only because I feel like barfing every time I taste or smell tequila. Interesting. You don't condition taste aversions, you know, like bad experiences from when you're oh. in your <laughs> early drinking years and you take it too far and then you're like, wow, I can't smell vodka anymore. It's one of those. 
But you're probably drinking the cheap Cuervo tequila back in the bars when you were like 20. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I'm too. I'm absolutely sure. Yeah, I, 20. Sure. 20. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely was using a real ID for some of those times for sure. Well, Canada's 19, so. Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. I think I was 17 when I first entered a nightclub. And I was 18, yeah. Um, we're rebels. rebels. I think I remember, my thing was China Whites. So this is how old I am because China Whites is like the white from the cow cow with Bailey's on top with cinnamon. Oh, they're great. They're really good. And I remember yeah. I did so many of them. I threw up and I was never again that I have China Whites again. Even the smell. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that's how I feel about that stuff. Yeah, I have a thing for like creaming the cures where I remember one time, Mike, it was, it was my birthday. He made me. You know, like Bailey's, like you're supposed to have like small amounts. He blended them with ice, Bailey's with ice or whatever. And he gave me a protein shaker. <laughs> but I was like, I know I like this stuff, but that's probably a bit much, Mike. It's so good. It's, it's, it's really good. Or like white Russians or what else do I like? Yeah, I usually get like some kind of Bailey's. If I, I rarely drink, but when I'm drinking, like I have no desire to like shoot any kind of hard liquor. It's like, no, give me something that tastes like a milkshake. That's great. Seriously. China whites. Maybe that's your next shooter. Just I'm going to try that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to layer it with a spoon. So it has a nice like div division of the anyways. It sounds good. Okay. Last one. Would you rather be abduct abducted by aliens and lived, but never see your loved ones again or oh. fight a zombie apocalypse to see your friends and family again? So, so I, I guarantee survive the zombie apocalypse or I might be eaten by a zombie. You might be eaten by zombies. You've got to fight them. Mm, a. I've talked about aliens. That's interesting. I don't know, actually. The Walking Dead is just like gives me so much anxiety. I'm always like, I'm always, I have like a, an empath. I'm always putting myself in the position of like people in shows, like to a ridiculous <laughs> extent. It's like I have dreams about it. I'm like, oh man, if I was this person, this is what I would do. And like, I'm just... I really think I would just be like, well, I'd be one of those people that's like, okay, well, just end it now so I don't have to deal with this. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's funny because I, kind of it, I don't know if when you watch that kind of stuff, you get so much angst that sometimes I have to stop and stop watching for a while because I can't handle the, the tension and the suspense. My boss asks why. He's like, why are you always running away in like the best part of shows? Like, sit down so I'm not pausing this for you. I was like, please don't pause it. It's like because it makes me so uncomfortable that I can't sit through it. <laughs> You can't like, handle it. Getting into the kitchen, getting a drink, and like going to the bathroom, and like just getting up. Because yeah, I can't. I can't deal with it. I totally get that. You're, are you? What's your sign again? Are you Libra? I'm a Taurus. Okay, that's interesting. Is that Taurus? The typical behavior. I have no, no idea about any of this stuff. You're like so not a Taurus to me. I'm like on the cusp of Gemini. Does that make a difference? I'm like I the twentieth. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm so glad to finally get you on. I was so happy to see your face because I haven't seen Aww. you in a couple of years. Yeah, it's been way too long. I miss you, but I will be in Toronto next year, so I'm going to hit you up for sure. Yes, please do. You can meet my baby. Yay, <laughs> we'll I can't wait. You can small baby then. Yeah, thanks, Karen. This was fun. Yeah, so let us know. Uh, tell the audience where we can find you, obviously, on Instagram. Katie yes, Crew. at Katie Crew with an E on the end uh, on Instagram. And yeah, my website is also my name. I have programs and info and lots of fun stuff on there too. Do you have a YouTube as well? I don't know. Oh, we're missing out. But I know. you're a busy lady, so I understand. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks, Katie. We'll see you next time. Bye.